Okay, hey everybody. So we are back for another day of sock fun, right? More sock fun. And uh, it's very bright out here, so I will do my best. Uh, let's see, so if you haven't been here before, <coughs> excuse me, I have really bad allergies. Um, my name is Kelly Slack, and um, I was invited to guest teach by Heather of Pearly Shell Fiber Arts. I'm the co-owner of Black Sheep Fiber Emporium. Uh, let's see, I have two master's degrees in teaching, so I really love to teach. I've self-published two books, uh, Froth and Foam, which is my book of lace, and Happy Feet, which is, you know, all about socks. Um, let's see, I've made over a hundred pairs of socks, so while I don't know everything, I do know a lot. And, um, your videos are sponsored by these three people. So we have Black Sheep Fiber Emporium, Kelly Slack Designs, and Pearly Shell Fiber Arts. So make sure that you are uh, heading over to their social media venues, clicking like and telling them, hey, thanks. Um, thanks for having Kelly on to do some videos. So uh, we have Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok. And I am trying to remember to put up um, all of the videos on the Black Sheep YouTube channel. So if you happen to miss it here, you can't find it in the WAFA group, the Woolen Fiber Arts group, then hopefully you can find it um, over on YouTube. So today is all about toe up heels. Um, there's not quite as many toe up heels yet as there are top down heels, but we do have a few to talk about. Um, of course, the afterthought and peasant heels can also be used for toe up socks, just like they can be used for top down socks. Um, because again, you either throw in um, a piece of waist yarn that you pull out and then you pick up the stitches on each side, or you cut your yarn um, in the middle of a row and then unravel it and pick up the stitches on either side of that to make both of those heels. And again, you can absolutely make those with toe up socks. Um, you could just knit a tube and then throw the afterthought or peasant heel in, depending on which one you like better. I I prefer putting in the waste yarn and pulling it out, but some people don't, so that's fine too. Um, so toe up socks, you could absolutely do that way. There's there's no reason that you can't. Both of those heels um, work for top down and toe up socks. And if that fits your heel really well, there's no reason not to use it. Or uh, if you're making maybe socks for a gift and you aren't sure about somebody's heel, hey, why not use that one? Um, and they're fun, they're fun to try. And then, goodness gracious, it is so bright out here today. I'm gonna move back just a second. Uh, the other two heels that I wanna talk about are our toe up heel flap. So this is the toe up heel flap here. And you increase out for the gusset right here. And then, um, you work your heel flap up and you attach it to the extra stitches. Um, it's a really interesting construction until you have um, all of your stitches in the round again. So this is the toe up heel flap. I found this one really fiddly. I found it much harder to work. Um, much harder for me to wrap my head around a toe up heel flap versus a top down heel flap. Um, I can do it. I tried it, it's interesting, but it's not my favorite when it comes to toe up socks. Um, a more common one and one that's used a lot is the short row heel flap and or, and this, not heel flap, just short row heel, but this is also one that can be used um, either top down or toe up because it just has wraps. Um, and it's, a, it's honestly a great way to learn short rows and there's different ways that you can work short rows. You can work them so that you are um, wrapping the stitch and picking up the wraps. And there's there's multiple ways to do that. There's like a Japanese wrap and um, I, don't, I don't even know. There's so many different ways that I can't even name them all right now um, because there are just so many different ways to do a, a wrap and a heel turn um, for short rows. But um, I'm gonna show you kind of a, a basic short row heel, what I do. Um, I have my, my tiny little, uh-oh, oh good, my needle didn't fall through the deck. That would have been embarrassing. Um, I have my tiny, tiny little um, sock on right now. It's, it's sort of a glove finger, but here's my tiny little sock. Um, top down cast ons are also great. I didn't even think about that for glove fingers. Um, but anyway, 
So this right here is, is my tiny little keychain sock. Remember I made the little top down sock right there. So here is my little toe up sock and it's ready for its, um, its little short row heel. And I went ahead and I put all of the stitches that I'm using, which is half of my stitches, onto one needle so that I can show you how to do that um, short row heel turn. So I'm gonna turn this down, maybe. There we go. And we are going to take a look at a short row heel. Get that in the right spot, okay. So here we go. Here's our little cute little sock, tiny little sock. And again, all I, I, I just made a little stockinette sock. So I did my little wedge increases here. You can see my little wedge increases right here and right here to make my tiny little toe from my uh, center out cast on. And then I have my stitch marker because this marks the beginning of my round. And I just knit some plain rows until my sock was long enough um, to do my cute little heel turn. So I'm going to go ahead and knit this first stitch. And I'm going to knit across. So as we talked about with um, the top down socks, if you happen to have a narrower heel, then you will want to start your um, heel turn, your short row heel turn, um, kind of right in the middle, right in the middle of that heel. If you happen to have a wider heel, then you'll want to start it further out um, because you'll need more room for that heel, more room for your gusset um, to hold that foot. So when we look at, um, when we look at our, um, our foot and our foot shape, and we think about where the toes and the foot and the heel are and that gusset, we just have to remember that if we need more space here, that we have to work fewer stitches and fewer decreases because that widens that out. Okay. So I've worked five stitches across and I'm going to do kind of a, a narrow um, heel cup. So I'm going to do six stitches and then when I go to wrap my stitch, because I've been knitting, I need to bring my yarn forward, slip my stitch, and then slip it back so that the yarn is wrapped around the base of that stitch so that when I turn this around, the yarn has wrapped around the base of that stitch but not been worked. And then I will purl two stitches. And this is how you can tell how many stitches you need to do. Uh, so there's three stitches here and then a gap. So there should be three stitches here and then a gap. So we've done the right thing so far because here's our wrap, here's our wrap stitch on the purl row. Here's our two purled stitches. So remember we were purling, so now we have to move the yarn to the back and we're gonna wrap this stitch by bringing the yarn around the base of it and slipping that stitch back to the other needle. And then we're just gonna turn that around. And we'll keep doing that. So we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this. Oh, I've done that wrong. Sorry, should have worked it all the way around, all the way out. I've done that wrong, totally wrong, so sorry. I was thinking about something else. Let's back that up. Should have worked all the way out, all the way out until I had a few stitches left in the middle. I got too caught up on the uh, narrow heels versus wide heels that I was trying to tell you about. Okay, so what I should have done is knit all the way out, all the way to the very last stitch and wrapped it. Bring it back. There we go, now I'm doing it right. So sorry. Like I said, I got too caught up on that whole uh, narrow heels versus wide heels thing. I was thinking about that too much. So. There we go. Now I'm on the right track again. All right, I'm gonna wrap that last stitch. Now, again, it does matter 
for that narrow heel versus wide heel because you'll work more wraps on those stitches in between than if um, you have a wide heel. If you have a wide heel, you may only work a few wraps. So here's the proper way, all the way across, wrap one, all the way back, wrap one. I'm gonna work all the way back to that gap. All the way back to the gap, which is this stitch over here. Wrap this stitch. So if, for example, I had a really narrow heel, I would wanna wrap all but maybe the two middle stitches. If I have um, a wide heel, I'm going to leave more stitches unwrapped in the middle. So that is the key to adjusting these heels based on the width of your heel. If you have really narrow heels, boy, I've got my yarn all tangled up here too. Let me try to undo this. There we go. If you have really narrow heels, you are going to want to work more wraps. Just work back and forth, back and forth. And that sun is so bright today. It was all nice and like foggy and misty and then suddenly, bam, there's the sun. And we're just going to keep working to that last stitch, back and forth, back and forth. Just like this, making our, our little wraps. So, just like that, just like that. All right, so now I have wrapped, let's go count them. One, two, three, four stitches on this side and one, two, three, four stitches on that side. That's a pretty narrow heel cup, especially on this little sock because I only have two unwrapped stitches in the middle. So I am going to start working my wraps back together. There's different ways that you can do this again and it's totally up to you how you do it. Um, you can just pick this up if you want and you can knit two together through the back loop you can um, actually I'm gonna twist that again I'm gonna double twist these really tighten them down I don't I try to be really careful with um, my wraps and turns on my heels because I don't want gaps and I don't want holes so sometimes that does mean uh, that you are going to have to um, adjust the way that your stitches lie and I'm actually going to purl two together through the back loop and see how that looks yeah that looks good because again we don't want gaps in that heel we want to make sure that as we're working them that we don't have gaps because we don't want holes in our socks right don't want holes in our socks this guy pick it up and I'm going to flip these around and then go ahead and knit two through the back loop so they're really twisted and tight. Just like that. And I'll keep working back and forth until my little heel cup is all done. Okay, I'm going to flip this back up. Okay. Sorry about the bobble on that heel. I got too caught up in the narrow versus wide heels. Alright, so let's see. Um, remember that when you're looking at your socks, that you need to take into account the length of your foot, the height of your sock, um, the, how wide your ankle might be, how um, wide the ball of your foot is, all different kinds of things to take into account to make sure that you are measuring it correctly. Um, when it comes to toe up socks, usually um, your heel is approximately two inches shorter than the total length of your foot. So if you have a nine inch foot, then you would start the heel um, after you have seven inches knit and don't forget that that lovely sock ruler is a great way to measure your toe up socks. Um, if you don't have a sock ruler, make sure you're laying it on a flat surface to measure. All right, all kinds of fun. So I'm going to get my cute little heel all um, taken care of. I'm going to get out of this super bright sun. It is October. It's much too bright for this here in, in St. Louis. Um, next time that we meet, we are going to be talking about um, cuffs and cast-offs for toe-up socks. So that will be um, tomorrow afternoon. We're going to talk about um, 
cuffs and cast offs for toe up socks because we're going to work all the way up that leg of that sock. Um, let's see, what's after that? I don't know, we're, we're, we're working our way through the last of um, the videos. So this was video, what, um, 11? Yeah, video 11. So four more videos after this and then we're done with our series on socks. All right, well, I hope that you've had fun today and you've learned a little something and don't forget that you can always um, catch the videos again on uh, the WAPA page. You can also find them on um, the Facebook page for um, Kelly Slack Designs and Black Sheep Fiber Emporium because I share them both there. And we also put them up on YouTube. So you can find them on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok. That's where all of our people are. So depending on what your social media flavor is, you can find us there. Anyway, I will see you guys tomorrow and I'm going to get out of the sun. Bye.